Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at the last tutorial we need to complete of the current factions available in Root Digital. So let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial for the Riverfolk Company. The Riverfolk Company has set up shop on the Great River running through the woodland. As the other factions purchase services, the river folk will be able to fund new trade posts across the forest. The construction of these posts is a viable way to score victory points, but so too are dividends gained from hoarding wealth. Mm. We'll see about the dividends. Well hey there chum, let me wash my hands real quick, they smell like clams. In the meantime, take care of setup for me and place four warriors in clearings along the river. We've got the best services in town. At the start of their birdsong, your opponents may purchase services by taking warriors from their supply and adding them to your payments area. Alright, so here's our payments area down here on our faction board, and we've got three different services that we are offering to the other factions in the woodland. So we've got river boats, which allows the buyer to treat rivers as paths until the end of their turn. We've got mercenaries, which allows the buyer to, during daylight and evening of this turn, treat riverfolk warriors as their own, but only for rule and battle against factions that aren't us. Okay, and then we have hand cards. So the buyer takes any card from the riverfolk's hand and adds it to their hand. And it's a public hand as well. Everyone can see what cards we have, which is really cool. Those payments become the funds that determine the actions you can take on your turn. During setup and evening, you determine service prices. Let's play hardball and set them all to three. The Lizard Colt are going to go ahead and take a turn. Sacrificing. And building a garden. Our service prices were so steep we didn't get any buyers. However, each game we start with three payments represented by warrior icons. During Birdsong, you move all payments to your funds to spend on actions during daylight. You can move, battle, and draw cards by committing funds. These funds move to your commitments area and won't be available to spend again until your next turn. Commit a fund to battle the Marquis in your bunny clearing before they recruit more warriors. Oh, wait, where did the zoom go? I like the otter's expression. I don't know why he's covered up by that number. Let's look at the otter down here. I like their the little frown they got, it's pretty cute. Alright, let's go ahead and battle Marquis here. You otter no better than to attack the Marquis. These cats talk a lot of smack, but they sure do get beat up a lot in these tutorials. Well done, you're more of a fighter than I expected. Well, I didn't do any fighting, I just told the otters to fight for me. Recruit now in the clearing you battled in to replace the warrior we lost in battle. Recruiting is costly. Funds used to recruit go to your supply rather than your commitments. This means they won't return to your funds on your following turn. So rather than committing a fund, we're spending the fund. And it should be noted that we can only recruit in clearings along the river. Uh, nowhere else. Unlike many other factions, you don't draw at the end of your turn. To draw cards, you must commit a fund to use the draw action. So the downside is we have to commit funds. The upside is we can draw as many cards as we want whenever we want. During evening, you may change the prices of your services. Let's hold a sale. Bring the cost of riverboats down to one and your other services down to two. 
Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys in just a bit when we look at the Riverfolk Faction Board why you should never set any of your service prices to one, or pretty much almost never. Those baked goods you have on offer look delicious. All right, they bought a card from our hand. And they're going to battle the lizards. Your riverboats will be of much use to the cult. Blessings of the scaled one to you. And they bought riverboats. <laughs> there goes the lizard in his little boat. 2-0 against Marquise. Recruiting in this clearing. Sacrificing a couple to get some acolytes. And now it is our turn. All right. So our sale was a success. We have a nice variety of funds to use for our actions this turn. So the Marquise and Lizard Cult both gave us warriors from their supply as funds. Let's go ahead and check out our turn order. So here is what I was referring to earlier, protectionism. If the payments box is empty, we place two of our own warriors in it. So that means if no one bought anything, you will gain two payments out of your own supply of otters. Now, if you set your prices to one, and one person buys one service, then you'll have only one fund in the payments box, but it won't be empty. So instead of gaining the two from protectionism, you're only gaining one from another faction. So that is uh, simply worse. Just there's, there's really no upside to it unless you're 100% sure. Uh, like maybe you're in a late game scenario and you, you need someone to buy a bunch of services from you in order to uh, help stop the faction that's in the lead, but they only have a few warriors left. That's maybe the only scenario I could think of. Otherwise, two should be the minimum price for your services. Our sale was a success. We have a nice variety of funds to use for action this turn. I already read that, sorry. You can spend two funds matching the faction of a clearing's ruler to place a trade post token and warrior there, as long as that clearing doesn't already have a trade post. So we can spend the two cats that we just got to establish a trade post with our little garrison. When you place a trade post, we score two points and they are used to craft. They allow us to score dividends and enable other players to buy more services from you. Each trade post you have built also contributes its suit towards crafting cards. Okay. So, we must commit a fund for each trade post used during crafting. Let's commit the lizard fund. Right, so we can only commit as many uh, funds to crafting as we have available slots on the faction board. So since we have three trade posts of each suit to build, we can free up that many slots by building the trading posts and when the trading posts are removed they don't go back on the faction board like other buildings and tokens they're just removed from the game which means the crafting slot is always open for you to commit a fund to you just can't use the same slot more than once per turn you can see this slot is used up from when we just crafted that boot all right us river folk are great swimmers we treat rivers as paths during movement and ignore the rule restriction when moving through rivers that's nice because the river folk don't have as many warriors as some of the other factions do they only have 15 total and they often have a few floating around in their uh, funds as well let's move two warriors along the river to our trade post to protect it Now the otters are going to hop in their boats. <laughs> that Marquise workshop is vulnerable. Attack. Show me a three. Here we go. Oh. Only got one of them. From traitor to traitor, I see. You will pay for this, river scum. 
Who's saying that? The cat is dead. Who else is there? It's just like the Marquise like commander from somewhere else. Let's leave our service costs alone for now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Wish I could fix it though, because it is kind of broke. All right. Marquis gonna go ahead and field hospital. Each enemy is allowed to buy one service from you a turn, plus an additional service for each clearing with a trade post and one or more of their pieces. Lizards are gonna buy mercenaries, so now we fight together against the cats. Rolling a 3-2. The buyer of your mercenaries must split casualties evenly between their pieces and your hired warriors, with the buyer taking odd hits. So here, we lose one each. And the cats lose all three of their warriors. So we lost the warrior, but it's fine because we got two funds in exchange. Wizard Cult moving awful fast there. This is just harder for me to follow what they're doing than the Marquise because I've seen the Marquise take turns so much more than I have seen the Lizards. Each time a trade post is destroyed, we lose half our funds rounded up. Let's recruit another warrior to make sure our trade posts are well guarded. Uh, what this doesn't mention is that the only thing it considers funds are this box here. Uncommitted funds. So, if you simply commit or spend all your funds on your turn, then if your trade post is destroyed, well, you don't lose anything really, except the faction that destroyed it gets a point. And since the crafting slot remains open, it's really not that bad if a trade post gets destroyed. In fact, sometimes it can be good for you because you can then build the trade post right back in that same clearing without having to go somewhere else to build it. But the tutorial wants us to recruit here, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, oh, they've got nine lizards left. Sure, we'll give them, we'll give them a lizard back. Oh, unselect that. During our bird song, we score dividends so long as we have a trade post on the map. Dividends score one point for every two funds we didn't use on our previous turn. Pass the turn to save funds for dividends. Now, dividends, um, I also dislike. Yeah, I, I dislike dividends quite a bit, and that's because you, you need two funds for one point, and in almost every situation those two funds can be better spent uh, in a way that will either increase your board position which will set you up to score more points or just directly score you more points than one point and not only that it incentivizes the other factions to attack you to try and destroy your trade posts and then you just lose the funds completely all right so let's set our hand card to three and we'll keep the other prices at two not going to go down to one though setting the hand card to three because um, I know these are AI but the Marquise would enjoy a bird card so maybe they'll go for it and we can afford to set it at a higher price and they'd be willing to still pay up looks like not though got a fox outcast for the cult it's fine if they don't buy anything we don't need them to And another garden. Lizards are building a lot of gardens. They're not scoring them very frequently, though. How many gardens do they have up? Four mouse gardens? Oh my gosh. Scoring dividends, plus two. Looks like we didn't receive any payments from this round. No matter, you move two warriors from your supply to payments as a consolation prize. Yep, that's our protectionism. Us river folk are innovative crafters. Instead of resolving the effects of a crafted card, we can add a warrior to our payments. Use the export button to craft for this reward. Okay, so export is 
another thing that's really not that good. Um, so we just, instead of getting the point and the boot from that card, we got one fund, which all that does is if no one buys from us again, we just will get one fewer fund than if we had just stuck with protectionism and we didn't get the point from crafting. All right, so we're gonna try and establish another trade post and score 15 points to prove us river folk are more than mere merchants. But yeah, the river folk have a couple pitfalls sort of just built into their design, uh, being the dividends and export. Those two things are really not useful and dividends especially uh, can trip up newer players to the river folk. Um, they, they can just hoard all their funds and not really interact with the board and then get a trade post destroyed and just be in a really bad spot and not just be very far behind with, uh, in their eyes, a little to do because it says on the board you get points for dividends, so why wouldn't they try to do that, right? It seems counterintuitive not to, right? But you want to try and just get points from your trade posts. You've got 18 points worth of trade posts here that you can establish throughout the game and then you just need to get the other 12 through any means necessary so crafting which you're quite good at as the river folk and battling uh, tokens and buildings off the board so let's go ahead and look at our options here on this turn see if there's anything nearby we can attack at we've got two completely undefended sawmills Unfortunately, it is two moves away, but that's not really that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and recruit. Yeah, let's go ahead and recruit a warrior here. And then we can Take two moves, committing the lizards here, all four so that we've rolled a clearing and are able to make this next move. Watch out for the Marquise Field Hospital ability. Warriors can be healed with no delay when removed from the keep clearing. Yeah, so in tabletop route, uh, Field Hospital is always employed immediately. But in digital, you can play games with a three-day timer. So in order to better facilitate asynchronous play, field hospitals will trigger at the start of the Marquise's turn unless that uh, battle where the warriors were removed or whatever caused the warriors to be removed happened at the keep because obviously it would be more critical that they have the warriors back right away if they're trying to defend their keep. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of something interesting. Oh, no, I don't want to remove that guy. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I didn't even see they had a workshop here. I can't move these guys now. Oh no, I should have recruited twice. Ah, I can't undo that move either. All right, well, that was quite a misplay. Hmm. What do we want to do then? All right, I think what I want to do is just draw cards then. And next turn we can worry about um, fixing the mess I've created by being completely blind to that workshop's existence. Uh, prices seem fine where they're at. But see, if no one buys anything, now we're stuck with one lowly warrior in our payments. Oh, and the Lizard Cult. Thankfully, we're gonna buy our riverboats. Very nice. Where are they sanctifying? Oh, interesting. Another garden. Man, these guys are getting out of control. If this was a full game, I would be pretty worried. Well, not worried, because obviously someone will destroy their gardens eventually, but maybe I would be trying to do it myself if my goal wasn't just to get the 15 points, which is pretty close to happening. 
All right, so we've got eight funds now. It's a pretty good number. And okay, so what I think we want to do is recruit twice here, or even better, just recruit once, battle this workshop off the board, move in here, so that's three actions, then move down for four actions, build a trade post, and battle. Oh, there's two unused wood here, that's beautiful. So it's highly unlikely that a real Marquise player is going to leave a juicy undefended clearing like this, but this is what I'm saying about the Riverfolk company don't necessarily need those dividends to score the remaining points they're not getting from trade posts throughout the game because they can just sort of form a ball, a glob of otters and just move around the board uh, battling through clearings and taking stuff out to get them more points. So let's go ahead and work with that strategy. We can spend a lizard, sure, they just bought a service from us, let's return the warrior to them and then let's go ahead and battle that. Commit a lizard. We just want to make sure we have two uh, otter funds left when we arrive at our destination clearing because we we will rule the clearing, which means we'll need to spend otter uh, warriors to establish our trade post. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, so I can move these guys now, but only, only to this clearing. All right, so let's go ahead and move, commit the lizard, move them up here, and now we rule. Yep, there's our rule flag, so now we can go ahead and take this move, commit our last lizard fund, move them, all five, we don't want to strand any guys in there at the keep, no purpose, and then we battle. Show me a three, so that with the defenseless bonus, we just wipe it all out. Perfect. Four hits, everything's gone. Four points for the river folk. All right, and then we can go ahead and establish our trade post here. Two more points. And now that that trade post has been established, we can commit our last fund to craft a root T. That turn worked very well. Sort of made up for the blunder, the small blunder I had last turn. All right, I am quite a fan of the Riverfolk Company. I think the interactivity they bring to the base game of Root is wonderful. I think they have a good amount of complexity and a lot of options at their disposal. And while they can be tricky to figure out what the good options are at first, once you really hone in on what you wanna do with these otters, you can do some really cool stuff with them. All right, so that is gonna conclude our series of tutorials for Root Digital uh, for now until they eventually introduce the underworld factions but that means in our next video we're going to be jumping into some gameplay so i hope you guys are excited for that i know i am i will see you then